this is a project we started, or I started a long, long time ago, wanting to get it done. We're, uh, we're uh, taking soybean oil we've crushed from splits that I clean off in the spring. Here's how the beans come out when we're crushing them. Once it cools off, it comes out like plastic. And once it cools off, it turns into like a taco shell. running about 190 degrees now and when it's up to temperature it'll be about 220 230 we're just getting her started good so it'll keep heating up squeezing it out into, we get several thousand gallon a year of that. The next process is, it settles out in that tank over there for several months. Uh, then it goes over to this tank. Okay, we pumped the oil from that tank after it settled for a few months into this tank, this is a 500 gallon tank. Uh, and then from here, I can pump down to about, oh, the last 20 gallon. So I leave that in the bottom, that one down to about the last 100 gallon, and I just leave that in the bottom. Uh, what's in the bottom is the, the heavier stuff, the peanut butter that settles out of soybean oil. Uh, we feed that to our pigs. Uh, they really like it, so uh, we coat used grain or old grain with it and feed to the pigs. So, but the top from here up, we pump that up into these tanks. They both hold 250 gallon. Okay, from those tanks up there, uh, they're really, I don't allow much settling there or let it settle much. It's pretty well settled out. But it goes through two centrifuges, which spin it up in bowls inside here, which we'll show after a bit, up to uh, about 3,400 RPM. And that spins everything out that's heavier than the oil, the water, uh, acids and and any particles that's left in from the soybeans uh, and and so from there I'm and I'm running this at about 10 from 7 to 10 gallon a, an hour so it's going through two of them and which gives me about that three to five gallon per hour so it's spending a fair amount of time in the bowl okay here's a look inside the centrifuge the bowl where this stuff collects I ran about 500 gallon of oil through it. And what you get inside here is this, uh, from the soy oil, is this peanut butter consistency of stuff, which is the heavier residues of the oil. The water also spins out in, in, in a wall around the outside of the centrifuge. When you shut it off, there's these little holes here that it drains back down. So any water or anything, all the oil that's in there drains down out of there. And uh, so about every 500 gallon of soy oil, and it's pretty well settled stuff. If you didn't settle it for a few months, <laughs> there would be, you probably wouldn't go 100 gallon without having to clean this. But it goes from there into this second one down here and I pulled it apart and there's hardly any residue in it, so I'm not 
and I've run a thousand gallon through it, uh, so I'm not going to clean it for a while. Uh, but I will clean this one again and get it up and running. It's coming out looking really good, as you can see from that video. From here, which has been a dream for a long time, it goes from here through a two micron filter over to another system, which we will go talk about. From uh, inside there, we're pumping it out through some packs, which I found was uh, good for vegetable oil, into a 500 gallon tank. We pump one of them tanks, which is 250 gallon, uh, full of vegetable oil. We fill it with number two diesel, two gallons of marble mystery oil, and uh, another solvent to hopefully keep the engines from coking up. Back in the 80s, I was reading online and there was lots of testing done with vegetable oil. They didn't use any solvents, they was just wanting to see what ratios they could run it at. And it seemed like you could find about anything you wanted to, but the bulk of the, the studies that I thought were done well was uh, up to about 50% it worked pretty well. Above that, it starts getting too thick and really starts coking things up. So I'm gonna, I'm starting at 50%. I've ran it in the past up to 80% a few years back. I never had any issues with it as long as you was running it every day and uh, leaving it set in the lines. I think it's best to burn it out and leave it, shut it off on pure diesel, which I do. I shut these engines off. Uh, but anyway, from here, it's being burnt in. Uh, this is a 200 horse. Old Alice Chalmers generator which the generator was bad, but the engine was good. So I made a heat exchanger here. This is full of about 30 feet of copper tubing going back and forth to heat the oil to 180 degrees or engine temperature when it's running, which uh, from what I found online, you needed temperatures up to about 350 degrees to get vegetable oil the same viscosity as uh, diesel oil. <clears throat> I don't know how these pumps would like 350 degree oil going into them. So I'm putting 180 degree oil into the pump. I can't tell any any difference, any more smoke, anything different. I, I'm seeing no difference in my oil. Um, I'm running a synthetic oil, but I'm also running a quart of Marvel Mystery Oil in the oil. Uh, it's got some solvents in there, supposed to help with the coking and stuff. So. I'm hoping that with, uh, by doing that, I'm going to keep the engine from coking. What is coking? Coking is uh, soot building up on your injectors and in the rings. If it gets too tight in the rings, it can actually lock, stick the rings and cause problems. I have friends that flew round engines for years and they always ran the Marvel Mystery Oil to keep the valves from sticking and the, the rings, valves and rings from sticking from the leaded uh, fuel. I'm hoping it does the same for this. I never had any problem before years back, but I wasn't putting the hours that these these are going to be running. I'm running my whole business on these engines. So that that is what we're doing with that with the soy oil. <clears throat> 